So in the previous example with Flask, we created basically two dynamic pages, and uh, each page corresponded to a function. And those functions might do different things. Maybe they uh, read a file and then return that data, or maybe they generate a string uh, for that file on the fly. Uh, but what was very convenient was how we specified uh, when those files should run. We just kind of had this in front where we'd say at app.route, and then we would pass in, well, uh, what what path or kind of URL do we want to trigger to trigger this function? And and so these things here are examples of uh, what we call decorators. And, and decorators in Python make uh, are kind of very easy to use, right? We can um, just put them there in front of a function, and they might either change the function's behavior slightly, or they might somehow kind of record that that function has some sort of broader purpose in the code, and uh, Writing our own decorators is not horribly difficult, but it's a little bit hard to kind of trace through in our minds what is happening. So I'm gonna head over here to the slides for a moment and look at two pieces of code um, that are equivalent. So here I have a function that prints out, you know, running f. And down here, you can see I'm kind of doing something funny, right? I say f equals test of f. Okay, so I have this test, I have this test function up here, and, you know, I'm not passing a regular value in to test, right? I'm passing in function, right? So I pass a function into test, and then I return a function. In this case, I, I'm kind of taking in and returning back the same function. I will eventually see cases where we do something more complicated, but that's what I'm doing, right? So test equals uh, f. So I'm just trying to kind of pass this function. Remember that we can actually have references to functions. I'm going to pass a reference to this function into test. Test can do something, and, and then I return it back. And whatever I return back goes into f, right? And uh, and then I can call f, and it'll work like normal. Um, an equivalent of this code, which is kind of weird, it's kind of like, well, why would I do that? I'll eventually explain that in more detail. A shorthand way of doing that is like this over here. Instead of saying f equals test of f, I could just say at test right before I define my function. And then what will happen is my function will get defined and then this will run automatically, right? So this code here, right, this, this little piece here is a shorthand for that. And so why do we want to do that? There's two reasons. Um, one is that we can take some additional actions when the function is defined. Uh, maybe like register, for example, that this function serves a particular purpose, like kind of generating a specific page. And then the other reason is that sometimes we'll return a different function. And the advantage of returning a different function is that we can kind of change the behavior uh, of what we're dealing with. Okay, so I'm going to head over here, and uh, and I'm going to go to I'm going to go to um, uh, Python Tutor to demonstrate what's happening here, and. Um, and, uh, and I'll do this. I'm going to define two functions. I'm going to have f, which will print f. And I'm going to have g, which will print g. And, and then at the end, let me just call g down here. And of course, while well, that prints g, no surprise, right? And so in this video, I'm not going to really get into like the purposes of the decorators, but I just want to understand the mechanics of them. What happens? Okay, so I want to put a decorator in front of here, and so uh, maybe I will call that uh, decorate me. Okay, and so for this to work, I have to create a function called decorate me. Okay, and and what I, whenever I have to do, I have to take in a function, and then I have to return a function. Actually, instead of calling decorate me, I'm going to call it swap me. This may be the name of it. And you're going to see why that, that is in a moment. So in this case, I'm going to pass in a reference to G, right? So I'm going to have a function that f, fn will be here. And instead of, instead of returning that same function, I'm going to swap it out. I'm going to swap out G for f, right? It's kind of very strange. Why would you do this unless it's some sort of like, you know, trick that you pull on a programmer? We'll eventually see why. Now let's just focus on the mechanics. And I'm just going to print here swapping. And, and let me actually just call this one more time. Okay, 
So I'm going to step through this code one at a time. Here's where it gets interesting, right? Because I have the decorator. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to run swap me and fn refers to this function g, right? Do you see that over on the right here? fn refers to the function g. I print swapping and now I'm going to return f. And, and what that really is saying is that, well, it, it's like I have a line of code that says g equals f. So instead of g pointing to the g function, g is going to actually end up pointing to this f function right here. Right, so I run that, and so I return that, and, and there, there you see, right, the g refers to the f function, all because that's what I returned. And so then when I, when I call g, f runs, and I print f. I call it again, and f runs, and I print f again. Okay, and so next time we'll actually look at some practical implications for this and, and why we would want to do that.